What are you cooking today, Miss Martha? Well, I'm not actually cooking anything. I'm doing some prep work. Uh, I hate to mention the word hunting season because I won't get any farther than that and I'll start getting ding, 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 dislike buttons on my video because people are opposed to that practice. But, you know, I'm Southern and I was raised in the South and people do go out and they hunt and they skin and they cook the meat and they consume what they hunt and they kill. It's no, no difference than if I went to Wendy's and I got a little hammered. I didn't shoot and kill that cow, but I ate meat. So I am guilty. I'm not a vegetarian. I wish I was. I'd be a lot healthier if I was, but I don't like tall salads. I don't like the texture. I don't like all the chewing. I like meat. So purpose of the video. It's hunting season. My husband's a city boy. He doesn't hunt himself, but he does have clients that do hunt, and they like to share and give him. He's got some venison coming this weekend, and I usually don't film videos on the weekend with the family around in the house because I'm just, I'm just too busy to stop and pause the camera and set up for such a, such a thing. I'm going to show you now, though, if you do, buy game, get your own game or gifted game, how to prepare it. You're going to start off first. You'll take your, your meat. You will rinse it really good in cold water. You will let it soak in a little bit of cold water with a tablespoon of salt in it for about 10 minutes. Then you will take it out and you will pat it dry with paper towels. Pat it really, really good and dry. Get all of that moisture off of it. And your meat's ready to go ahead. Wash your hands really good and you're going to have to make your dry rub. You're going to start off with one tablespoon of salt, one tablespoon black pepper, one teaspoon nutmeg, one teaspoon allspice, one teaspoon cinnamon, one half teaspoon cumin, two tablespoons beef bouillon granulated powder, two teaspoons instant espresso. These things do not have to go into the mortar pestle, so you're going to go ahead and put those in a small bowl and set that aside. Now, you either have to have a spice grinder or you've got to have a mortar pestle because these little seed stuff, they, they're just going to get all in your teeth if you don't grind them up to put them in your rub. So we have thyme, not the ground thyme, the leaves. Or I should say proportions. We're going to use one teaspoon thyme, one teaspoon caraway, the seeds, one teaspoon coriander, the seeds. Let's do this one next. One teaspoon mar marjoram, I always say it wrong, marjoram, the leaves. And I like to add this in there as well. It's just the McCormick. It's a little dry pickle spice, which just has lots of the same things I've already showed you here. But it's a, it's a, it's a good round out uh, mouth appeal for oomphness to my dry rub. They're all going to go in here. You're going to grind it up till it's a powder. And you're going to add that in the bowl with your other spices. And that's going to be your dry rub. So you have, you've got your meat that you have rinsed. And you pat it dry, you've made your dry rub, and you're gonna put your meat out on a on your on a slab, on a, a, a butcher's block or whatever, and you're gonna take that dry rub, and you're gonna rub it over the top, flip it over, rub it over the other side, and you're gonna set that aside. Wash your hands, and now you're gonna make your marinade. Okay, because now the dry rub is starting to break down the toughness and the gaminess and the bloodiness. I don't really I don't eat I don't eat game meat, so don't don't fault me on that. I will eat a hamburger. I will eat some chicken, but I don't eat the game meat, but I have to cook it because my husband likes it. So I'm not going to uh, default him from what he likes to have. Now for my marinade, we're going to use a carton of the beef broth in a small pot. We're going to heat it up on the stove top. We're going to use one bottle of the balsamic feed dressing. We're going to use one container, the whole container of the Marmite. We're going to use one jar of the seedless blackberry preserves. We're going to use six tablespoons of olive oil and four tablespoons of uh, brown sugar bourbon mustard. You can use regular mustard, but this I like this one. Okay, so all of the liquid ingredients are on the stove top, and we're going to warm those up over a simmer till everything starts uh, melting and into a, a consistent uh, thickness. It should be thin like pancake syrup, and then you will come over to where you didn't use. Obviously, <laughs> that you had a whole huge deer. You didn't use all this dry rub that you prepared. You just used, you know, a tablespoon here, a tablespoon there. Maybe at the most three tablespoons of it. So you should have a lot of dry rub left over that you're going to put in. Uh, as long as you used a clean hand, get a spoon out. You didn't put dirty little hands that been on the meat into it. I should have told you that. Keep your dry rub clean off to the side. 
So you should have enough that you could put three tablespoons of your dry rub into your marinade. So the same flavor will be carrying out throughout the meat. Now you're gonna take the, you're gonna turn off the heat after you stirred in the dry rub into your marinade. Turn off the heat, pull it off the burner, let that cool down to room temperature. You don't want to put in a hot marinade; it'll start cooking your meat. So while that's doing that, you'll go ahead and pull out your fresh herbs. You've got thyme. And rosemary, the sprigs. I hate peeling garlic. You've watched my videos before, hopefully. And you know I, I do, so I've got the whole cloves here. So we're going to go to our meat that's got the uh, dry rub on it right now. We're going to take a little knife blade, and you're going to cut a little slit. Here, one there, one here, one there, one there. Not right up I got the jet, not all the way through. Just the size of maybe the end digit of your finger. The size of a clove of garlic, and for maybe depending upon the size, most people venison, most little roast that's feeding the family is about you know six inches, eight inches long, depending upon what the cut is from the animal. You're going to cut you a little slits, and you're going to poke your little garlic down into it, and you're going to poke some little sprigs down into it, all into that. By this time that you finish that, you're going to take the roaster pan that you're going to cook it in, put a little olive oil on the bottom so it doesn't stick, transfer your meat, put it into the pan. And it's got dry rub, and it's got its fresh herbs on it. And as long as your marinade has cooled off at this point in time, you're going to pour that over the top of the meat. And you're going to put the lid on top of your roaster and put it in the oven. Some people will take their meat before they put the dry rub on it, and they're going to sear it on all sides with just a little salt and pepper. But uh, I'm not trying to sear in the moisture of the meat. I want that bloody taste. I want that out of my game. I don't even like to cook game in my house because I feel like I, I feel like I'm, um, I'm cooking one of my chihuahuas when I walk by is what I think game smells like. However, with this process here, I've gotten rid of all that odor and all that sense and all that smell of it. And I can even eat it myself, but I just choose not to. It tastes, it tastes, it does taste really good though. I have tasted it. I do know that it tastes really good. I just don't personally consume game meat myself because um, I watch too many Bambi movies growing up. <laughs> Well, happy holidays to you. Happy hunting to you. Be safe. Wear your protective orange when you're out there in the woods. And uh, uh, don't hate my video just because it's about hunting. I don't hunt. Don't blame me.